I think we are live. Hello and welcome to episode 36 of Relegation Regen Rebel 2 with Parma. We've got already someone in the chat. That is amazing. Sem, hello. How are you doing, sir? I'm going to test something new out. I'm going to try and save the thumbnail already in. So, uh, just saved. Let me know if you can see it. Set the stream up, that is fantastic. Yeah, I'm doing just fine. Just uploaded yesterday whilst I set up the stream. If you haven't watched, go ahead and have a quick uh have a quick look around of what happened last time. Or uh, let me know if I if you want me to spoil it for you. I really don't want to. I have to set it up, share it around the Discord still before we start properly. And uh, let me know how is the sound, what you think of the sound. You can spoil. All right. Then uh for everyone watching this afterwards, please mute it now. So this is what happened, Semk. We had we had gone through the month of the months of February and March and uh what happened was pretty spectacular. We had an amazing comeback win starting off it, we went 2 0 down against Bologna and came back. That was an amazing start. Then, we unfortunately just about dropped all three points against AC Milan. Accardi did me dirty there. Just. Yeah, really disappointing. Uh, we simmed. Uh, Palermo and we won 2-1 that was a really good win just to get on with the season and uh, then we faced Inter Milan we faced AC Milan the other club from Milan what are you talking about Rodolfo and uh, we somehow managed to squeeze a 1-0 victory out of it which was amazing I did not expect us to get even a point actually but the team played so well and I had doubts about how the team deserved it deserved to have the uh, Europa League spot but after that ep after that win against Milan they sure deserved it and they confirmed that with another win against Napoli later on in the week Then we had a mammoth simming session. 
and uh, it went about as right as it can get. But an easy, we drew. It happens, you know. Just not every result was going to go our way. Then we had two amazing wins. First, Frosinone and Devon Cable. We won 2-0 and 3-1. And uh, we drew to Spal. Our bit of rivals got a point. Got two points out of us. Which was a bit frustrating. If anyone I wanted to beat Spal. But that's the way it goes really. And then we started off April with a 2-0 win against Cagliari. You've seen the Beyond FIFA 19 notes that EA released. I haven't had the time. But um, I might. I was thinking about having a look. At it after the stream, it's just that I've been, I've been so busy, like, either editing or just getting the episodes out, just haven't had really time for myself. I just keep up with the other lot as well, as well, at, whilst I make videos, so, I really don't have a lot of time to myself. And uh, yeah, so that's Discord done. Just about finished it. And uh, we're good to start. So, after that amazing episode, we even climbed Ace Milan and everything. Did not expect that whatsoever. We find ourselves in third with our aim being top six. We can afford to drop eight points, if I'm not mistaken. At least six. I know that we can drop at least six points, that is two games. In a three, seven games until the end of the season. I'm pretty sure the Juventus one we're gonna sim. Because we play them and uh, I lost. I don't think the team is good enough yet to take on Juventus. And um, it really depends on the other games as well. I wanna face the Swallow because they've beaten me. In the start of the year, I'll just quickly show you. Hey, O'Connor Foster, how you doing? They beat us at the start of the season when we had an actually okay start. They brought us down. They brought us back to earth, really. And after that, we had a dry spell and couldn't afford to. Couldn't even get a point. The turning point was the draw against Inter. And after that, I don't think we have lost many times since. It really was two turning points in our season. We lost to Juventus, of course. But that was a one-off, really. Me playing, then we lost 4-1 to Fiorentina in the Simon. But we beat Roma. Which I did not expect. And we lost to Inter Milan. That was it. After that, really, a really good case for Europa League football. Jovic moved to Real Madrid. Are you serious? Shut up. Are you actually kidding me? <coughs> let, me let me see. I'm just... Uh, just really keeping up with the football world even. I'm, I'm really not. I wished I could, but I just can't at the minute. Too much going on. And uh, also in my life outside of YouTube as well. These guys are rivals, surprise, surprise. Just every team in this division does not like being around. Okay, there's the right controllers. They hate each other. I'm just looking forward to the game uh, tonight, which is Portugal versus Switzerland. I haven't really kept up with the transfers, apart from Porto, of course. I've already made some moves. Out especially, but some good deals done. Can't blame the club really. 60. F I cannot. Cannot be fucking. How has he gone for 65 million? Right. 
I know he's good and everything. This is not me shinning on him. Like, don't get me wrong, he's a good player, but... I mean... It just does, it, it ain't right. It just ain't right. It still shows he's at Eintracht Frankfurt in one football, but... If that is through, then that is a mad deal for Eintracht. Like, fair fucking play. That is a deal. Um... Wow, that, that has left me speechless. Jesus. Right. <clears throat> so what are we looking at? Sandro's a bit tired. I mean, we can play Sandro in the middle. De Francesco's gonna play. And uh, for this game, I want Vlasic to redeem himself. Because he was the one to blame for us conceding the goal that ultimately led to our loss. So he plays on the right-hand side, has to deal with Di Francesco again. This is going to be a, a cool back and forth, really. Uh, this happens all the time. Touring was talking about it in the the premiere that happened last night. Just there are no wing back. If you have lots and lots of left backs, you you either don't you don't have right backs to play there, or anyone that can actually do a job, at the very least. Like all of them can only play left back, and it is so true in this case. This uh, Trotter guy don't need him. There's Ivan Costa. Two really good substitutes. Brignola in as well. What about the midfielders? He looks good enough. Gonna. This guy's five foot six. I mean, I think he can go off for a Brignola. Andy Carroll, ladies and gentlemen. Just, yeah. What is he doing over here? Philip Juricic. This guy was... Back in the FIFA 14 days, I used to see him at Benfica and people were like, Oh, this is the next big thing and all of that. Just, not really. Oh, talking about the next big thing, look at Silva here. Five star, three star, that is... Ridiculous. All right, that that is that deal is crazy. By the way, that we were just talking about, how, how in the hell was there a bribe or anything? Like because it it definitely looks like that. If anything looks like a bribe, it's that deal. Like Jesus, that is crazy. I know, I know. Cinefet, are you? I I'm pretty sure I've heard of that. Pretty sure I've heard of that club. Or is it Gimarais that you mean? <laughs> People don't really remember Gimarais. Anyway, gotta go with these lineups. See what that goes. It's sin finds, yes, yes. They're in the third division. Third division here in Portugal is a bit weird. There's like four groups with the uh, Around 17 or 18 teams. It, it really depends on the, the teams that are still afloat, basically. 
and uh, they play in a league system and then we have a playoff system where the top of the group go through to uh, like the playoff have like a buy or anything and the second place teams have to go against each other where like the the first uh, the winners of the leagues are seeded teams Nice to have you with us, Martin Tyler here and Alan Smith. Yes, yes, from uh, Sertan. We've got Palmer, yes, they yeah. play Sassuolo. I do. But my local club, uh, like, before I went to Lisbon, well, so much at stake. Before, uh, before I got teams, here actually, to Lisbon, I used League, to for next have a yeah, different local club, and that was called Naval, unfortunately. The, the best years are past them. Right. Will to start off with. They're not. <coughs> I'm not sure if they are even afloat anymore. Like, they were the main side over there well, and they were in the side. first division. So I grew up watching them in the, the first moment. division. They, they even beat Porto. Yeah, good game, and they won 2 0, deservedly so. And, uh, just today, a though. sad state of affairs over there. If, uh. If they somehow get to the second division. And uh, FIFA puts the Portuguese second division in, then um, that would be really good because that is like the one that I'm doing. Like, I, I wanted to do a, a Portuguese team for a series a long time ago, and it just never really materialized. That would be like the one move. Which I'd, le I'd really like to do. But I just know, I just know it won't happen. Both things. I either Naval going up, and um, FIFA putting the Portuguese second division in anyway, which is a really big shame. But for why I sell that's a big thing. Not having the second well, division. Right, German, Germany has it. Really France, Italy, Spain, Spain, they all have it. England has four, for fuck's sake. Right, like, Portugal doesn't have, or the Netherlands, for that fact. Still, big football nations that don't have second divisions. Maybe even Turkey, but like Portugal and the Netherlands. Not having a second division just baffled me. Being such a big country, despite the leagues not being as competitive as the top five, they deserve it. Now this looks promising. Boa Vista or Portimonense? Well, if you're Portimonense, I can respect that. And Swallow just scored. If you're Boa Vista, I don't really like it because they're, ri they're rivals with Porto. And, um, and the chance that was taken. They know what they're getting with their wide players. But they like they're not like Benfica's sporting level simply so because of the competitive well aspect of it. That Boavista is not the side that used to be like they used to play in the Champions League. They they won they were the last team to win the league. Um not being sporting Benfica or Porto, the top three. And that was a really long while ago. Still in the 21st century, but a while ago. Like, really at the start of the century. He's got support here. And here's the shot. Threw everything behind that shot. And frustrated that it wasn't quite on target. Well, if he keeps getting in those kind of areas... Yeah, sure that, that is a good soon. question. Are you from Portugal, Sam? Go ahead and fill that for us. Because it definitely looks like. Or do you have family over here? Kovac. Verde does a good job. Here is Jacobs. Really bad pass. I haven't focused at all in this game. Yes. Challenging. Sandro. 
Good challenge by Gavrich and Bettini gets it away. This centre back partnership is something else. All over the top. It finds Grabasic. It doesn't find Grabasic. Scratch that. Gavrich and he doesn't get it away. Di Francesco. Still got it. Boschko, take the ball off him. Like, you're right there. Jesus Christ. Crosses in. Kovac does a good job. Come on. We need to come back from this. So Swallow's in the running as well. Come on. Grabasic. Good turn. Boschko shot is in and Fructal has an easy task. All right. Fair, fair play. You know what? Fair play because Sandra. normally loads of people that I talk to don't even care about here. Now Sandro. I just it's just completely disregard and ignore it. What a terrible ball. And they've hit the post. Get it out. Completely disregard the league or the Netherlands. Or even both some of the more ignorant guys. I respect that. Block, block Jacobs. Like it is really frustrating because it is a good league. Just because it isn't the top five doesn't mean it's bad. It really doesn't. Right, we need focus for the second half, really. I'm uh, taking. I'm not taking Vlasic out yet. Like nobody really did wrong. Time now for the second half to start. Sandra. Six for eight. I think I know who you're talking about. I can't really remember. But I think I know who you're talking about. Can't remember it from the top of my head. Yes, come on. Let's go. Grabasic is alone. Time for a goal here, really. Send it across. There we go. Goal for Sol Ortiz. Well, one nil. Uh, well, one all now. Just come back. Finally. Now he plays for Serpenenzi on loan well, from Sinfa. It's not Sinfa, but yeah, it's. Yeah, I mean, let me just put that in. There. there you go. Come on. Not the, not the freaking dictionary. There we go. That's how it's called. With the A, the A thing is like a bit of a song like a, a dog bark. It's a sound that doesn't exist in English. It's like just a, just a less sharp, just do it less sharp basically. In from the wide area. Only there we go, got it away. Washko inside. This couch to start is literally wide open, alone. Has Samuel Teki. Inside, Vlasic. Again, Washko. Great ball over the. across the. Uh, six yard box. Grabasic is at the far post. It is really fantastic. Fantastic play by Parma. Yeah, just FYI. Oh yeah, Stoke. Yeah. They're in the championship, aren't they? It's really big shame because I rated Stoke. Despite the old saying that goes around England. But I mean, you don't stay in the Prem for so long because for being bad. You have to be 
decent to be in the champion uh, in the Premiership for that long. He have to do something right. It's simple as. Oh, Gavrich is there. He deals with the Francesco. Solid work. Now it's time for the substitutions. We'll do that one because I was thinking of doing it at half time. El Deeb is going to come on, and I'm going to take both midfielders off. Mm, in saying that, I don't think. Hmm. Don't think that's the wise move to bring in two midfielders in. I'm going to bring Grubasic to the middle so he doesn't have to run that much. And we'll bring on Gallo Speed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what was the game? Well, Alan, here's the substitution now. Well, yeah, I think he's maybe tired towards Yeah, just a shame that but, when uh, goal, teams drop down, down to the championship, like, the they have work. to sell really their first team squad to on. balance the the sheet, the weight sheet. It's, it's really that simple. Where is Grabasic? At the edge of the area, it's blocked. Dream League Soccer 17. Oh, yeah, I, I used to play that. I used to play that, that actually, but I didn't really like the game, I, I used to like the classic one. It didn't took so long and it wasn't that pay to win, like you had to pay to have good players and the difficulty was just even worse than this, somehow, it was just that easy to win. And same with the Dreams League suckers that followed, that's why I don't play anymore. The classic is not available, good save Groover. And uh, the new ones are just no good enough for me personally. Oh, that's a really heavy challenge by Viga Rito. So Lord, he's a slot of that guy away. Teki is off, but he's offside. Bad header back. Gabrich. Through ball again. Figarito has Solar Tease. Chip it out wide. Got someone arriving at the edge of the area. Grabasic is there for three. Superb play. Parma are just running <laughs> to swallow over. Hey, up, super cool. How are you doing? Well, this is when it's tough being a goalkeeper. A little bit more. Good to see you around finally. As it is, he's picking the ball out of the net. Yeah, he sets high standards, this lad, and I think he's just dropped below those. Another angle on it here. 3 1 the scoreline as we restart the game. We've got 10 minutes left on the clock. Still got a bit to do, but this is promising. Oh, what a ball. That was beautiful, but I just passed it back. Right, let's go. Figueroa. Teki has Solar Tees arriving. Rivero really muscles him out of the way. Heather, good. And again, Grabasic can't touch it down. Yes, Grabasic. Well fought. Ship it up. Brilliant play, Morales into the box, Danger it's cleared off large. the corridor of uncertainty. So how is the off. formation Rodolfo? It, it really feels like the team has evolved, I wouldn't say it's the formation help, I'll give you that. It, it really feels better than it was before. But well, I think also the players have evolved as well and that combination led us to that amazing winning streak. And uh, normally the Simon goes against me, also have to point that out. And uh, this time it didn't, it went my way. It really went more my way than I wanted it to be. 
I wanted to have a challenge. That's why I started Simmons. For, in fact, the op the opposing thing. It was really the other side of the coin that came up. And uh, that is full time. That was so quick. I literally just stopped looking at the screen for a second. And boom. That's it. Grabasic, man of the match, undisputedly. Two goals. I mean, one was a tap-in, but the second, a brilliant volley. 3-1. Can't say much more than that. Just a great win. The defense was outstanding, especially in the second half when I started focusing on the game. Interesting, that. Interesting. Then uh, Boschko and Gallo on the wings, superb. Not that Verdi and Jacobs did a bad job or Grabasic out wide, but Gallo and Boschko pulled strings for us. Teki didn't score or assist, unfortunately, but he had a good game regardless. I think he deserved the goal more than Sol Ortiz did. You lose 90% of the away games. I mean, not really. I've won more away games than lost. But, yeah. Uh, I think I'm good. Because I don't have players for that kind of formation, Sam. I'm good. And Super Cool's tactic is working. I never mess around with the tactics when it's working. It's as simple as if you, if it's not broken then don't fix it. It's as simple as that. It's a crazy formation that I will try someday. I'll, I'll definitely remember it but... Just not for Palmer. Right, we're good to start simming after that amazing win against the Swallow again. Just speechless how that went down. Got Sampdoria next, that's a 2-1 win. And we've got to train the players. I'm gonna skip uh, through Pescara as well because we beat them. <laughs> do everything <laughs> it's almost like uh, you do um, you, you do like squares up the pit up the middle of the pitch and you have the two wing backs but that really isn't a f uh, two 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 or whatever that is it's really more of a four two 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 I know what you're saying, there's something similar to this one that I can show you really quickly. It's close, where is it, to this one, but the wing backs are a bit higher. That is the difference. I don't think it's a good fit. Because we, we really need that attacking midfielder to be alone and we have to have wider wingers for them to work. Oh, oh, it's simply just, oh, okay. O okay, fair then, then I don't think so, because we have a lot of quality wingers. It's a straight line. <laughs> Never heard that one before. Definitely an intriguing one. Explained by Stoke City. That is such a good sight. That is such a good answer. Right, 2 0 win again. Dear me, are we, are we even fighting for the title or what? It is really going down. I mean, I would have won. I'm pretty sure we won Parma in the reverse picture, but at this rate, we're fighting for the bloody Serie A title. I'm pretty sure we can drop some points against Atalanta. I mean, I'm gonna have to make sure we drop points against Atalanta. Unless uh, the CPU actually wins their games. Right. Like, 
Oh, cry. No, we're... Please. Please, no. <laughs> Just, uh... We'll leave the tactics off of preseason. How about that? Leave it alone. It is working. All right, Atalanta next. They they didn't got the three points. We're gonna have to drop all three. For once in my lifetime, I'm actually making sure the Simon goes the other way. Because I don't think we deserve Champions League football yet. Don't think we're ready for it, and don't think we deserve it either. Got some cracking players in the academy though, I'll tell you that much. Right, so we'll save it up here. Save it in this Razo backup that I've had for so long when I was boosting him. Who is your highest rated player? It is Esposito at 84, but he doesn't play. He doesn't play, unless it's about the Simmon. But we do have Grover at 79. And uh, then it's all mid 70s. It really is a side of mid 70s with an 80 overall goalkeeper in there. 80 plus even with Esposito. I don't think we're ready for um, for Champions League football. Even though the players have shown that they are better than their overalls, I think Champions League football is a step too high for them. We've, how have we won? Right. Let me let me see the reverse fixture that we did against Atalanta because I'm pretty sure that we lost. And if we did lose, I think I can play that game. Atalanta. There they are. We drew. We drew. Fair enough. My formation is way too good. Yes. I think that is physically impossible. <laughs> I mean, it real in the simon. It, it it is. It is. But it's in the way game. It's in the way. You see what I mean? Like <laughs> your formation is way too good, Sam. But a, a, a super cool one. I don't think... Yeah, there we go. That's more like it. Right, even in fourth, I think we should be fine. Like, I can take fourth and then just... Uh, either bottle it on purpose. After trying, of course. I don't, I don't think... I don't think this team is ready for Champions League football. I just don't. So we're playing against Torino uh, later on. I know that. Got some press conferences here. Got a home game against Lazio, who are a solid side. We're going to save it again. Don't think we're going to play again because it, it really is that OP. We're going to make sure we don't get ahead of ourselves. And what I can do next year is that I'll only play the Europa League. That's what I was really thinking. One old draw against Lazio. We jump ahead. I mean, isn't this funny? I mean, when we try to bring the teams down, they always make sure to lose every single time. It is ridiculous. When we try to bring them up, nah, the computer's like, sort of. We're trying to ship you back down to the division below. Or just try to keep you in mid-table. Play Juve. Hmm. 
I mean, fair enough, we did lose to them. So funny that we just drew to Lazio and then everyone like bottled it as well. Right, 2-1 loss to Lazio. Surely they haven't... There we go, that's more like it. Roma won. There we go. We're going to make sure Torino wins. Because we're going to save it after the loss. And we can do the training as well, so we don't have to do it again. Get it out of my face. I mean, Sam, please, no. Just talk in English. Talk something I can understand. I, I, I know it's Russian. I can see it's Russian. I can't translate it, though. Save it on the normal R2 one. The original save. Skip ahead. Let's have a look at what Torino does. Please win. And also Milan. And um five points. I really want them both to win. Actually we only need Torino to win. We only need Torino to win because we face them. Oh, come on, guys. And Really? Right. Let's leave you up there. Simon. Translate this across. Oh, come on, Torino, stop bottling it. Jesus, when did you get so bad? Oh, come on, really? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mate. Are you, are you sure about that? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not showing that. We're, we're classy over here, lads. So Torino wins, good news. We can get on with the simming. Simone Zaza's the Martin Tyler puppet. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Boschko is the player of the month, everyone. Yeah. I haven't spotted that yet. <laughs> no, yeah. J just please. Right, when does Torino play? I'm I'm pretty sure they don't play today. They do play today. Okay, the fixture list is more even more fucked up than I thought it would be. So if we win that guarantees his fourth place. I really don't want to play Juventus though. Go to Twitch. <laughs> I'm leaving in <laughs> What did I miss? Yes, thank you. Finally, Jesus. I mean, j please, no. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There you go. It didn't. It didn't. Right, I'm going to play Juventus for you. And I'm going to give it my best shot. Whatever happens, happens. But my first team is tired. Don't think this is going to go well. We're going to give Bruno and Gallo a go. 
Gonna play Vega Retail. Had a sensational game. Last time out, we'll bring on Gabrich. And Marinovic is tired, which means Vlasic plays in the center. And we'll bring on a wing back. That'll have to be a left back. And that will be Arvidsson. Solid. We'll bring on Santoso Jasper to do the CDM role. We'll put Colin Williams in. Actually, we don't have a striker in. Alright. Don't have a proper striker in. I know Giordano's a centre forward, but like, he's 5'5 five five, guys. He can't do it up top alone. You need, we need someone like taller like Santoso Jasper to do it. If we need to. Or Urubari. Urubari is a great choice for striker. Yeah, he's a lot taller than uh, Giordano. And uh, we've tested him there. Ismail's going to be the centre back if we need him. Then Juventus. Ronaldo's 37, which means he might be retiring. Bernardo Silva, probably the best player at the moment over there. They've got a wing back they can't even bloody play. They've got tired players themselves. They really don't have a solid side ready. Quadrado has dropped down to a 79. Wow. Interesting. Gundogan can come in for Chan. That's a no-brainer. He just fits her. <coughs> It's hard to leave Gulam out, but for for Alaba has to be. The ball is injured. Okay. Play a five-star skiller as striker. Hmm. I like my players to be tall. My, my I like my strikers to be tall though. Got a cam over here. That's good news. We can do that. Coleman is going to be the backup winger, of course. He's not that tired. And coming off the bench doesn't really matter from a certain point. Midfielders, though. I'm struggling for a good midfielder in for Emery Chan, so I'm going to leave him there. Perrin's going to play for Chesney because of the rating. And I think we're good. I think we're good with that. Reid Sumanujevic have proven themselves worthy. Of playing this game. So we're going to give him a shot. I mean it's really the strongest side they have. People. <laughs> I know. War machine. But I think in real life that's what will happen. Honestly. I think in real life he's going to stay quick. He's going to stay sharp. Because he, he's really done well. Like, I think Ronaldo, for sure, is going to keep his technical ability. I think we all can agree on that. But he's done such a good job of taking care of his uh, body for competition. He's just not the parting type. He really isn't. He really likes the competition. And I think that is a big part in every athlete. That is really everything from... Uh, from a certain point onwards for example on the 30 year uh, spots onwards when the people start to lose their physical ability they start losing that uh, acceleration don't have to sell for you it's got such a fascinating history I think no Juventus can seal the title Sold today the out, what, five six times over I reckon because of the history of the or if they game. haven't the or they have already oh, sealed it anyway well, I think with Ronaldo isn't just not gonna drop his uh, physical um, I just don't think his uh, physical presence is going to diminish as much as other players because he does a great job of taking care of himself as a player. Now, and uh, the other thing that tells me that he's going to be that good at 37 years of age, I think you never posted Sen. Anyway, it's because he's just 
really good at adapting to positions. Look at where, look at the role that he started out at United. Tearful football, by the way. Really good channel. Go check it out for this things. Just uh, when you have the time after this stream, go and put Tifa football Cristiano Ronaldo analysis. It, it really is that simple. They talk about how he starts a, as a winger, a quick winger at United. That works for the team, tracks back, does everything. Also, then it goes to Madrid, uh, starts playing more as a, a goal scoring winger. And now he's fully converted to a striker role at Juventus. He's just a really intelligent footballer. And he, he has learned to pace himself at an older age. And to be fair, managers have been fair to him for being honestly so good that really managers at a certain age have to take care of their best players by resting them once in a while in the not, not, not so important games. All right, goodbye, Semk. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in. And it's the start of the game here. There we go. Yes, Rito. Fantastic kickoff glitch. Oh, it's hit Marcus Alonso. Really tight angle to try that kind of shot. I think he's just trying to catch the keeper unawares and squeeze one in. <laughs> oh, there, yeah, there is, there is Connor. Look at Ronaldo going here. He's just not sprinting. Look at that. He's still quick on the game, even, which is ridiculous for just uh, making old guys look slow and weak. The ball over the top. Don't think Weavich is going to get there, though. Forced Benucci to whack it away. That's good enough. He probably doesn't have the pace that he once had in the save. There we go. Gallo. Come on. Still going. Crosses in. Bruno with the header. 1 0 Parma. What a start. What a start. This team is turning into something. Like, the players have really gelled together. And the change of tactic came at the right time as well. And it, it does the difference. It, it really does, to be honest. Great delivery into the box from that left hand side. It's where they look dangerous. So the first goal it's one. I've played the best team and I'm making them look like fools. It really is that simple. I made sure to play the best team available for this particular game. And they're still looking like fools. Do that. I want at least a 4 0 victory, yeah, right. You, you can forget about that because it's FIFA 19, you don't get goals that often. I think the wide man's got a Let's go. Gallows off. Cross is in. Oh, close. Benucci Quadrado. just about cleared it. Quadrado. It's Durado. Marcus Alonso. I just hope that Torino wins as well. I really hope that Torino wins. So we can bottle it in the last game. Make sure to get them the point over us. But if we win, that won't matter. That really won't matter. Oh yes, Carito crossing. Oh, I really want an, an Ujevic goal. Spotted that well and intercepted. Ronaldo, yes, cut out by Carrito. He's been superb so far. Let's go, Verde. Carrito again. Back inside. Give it back to Carrito. Brilliant one, too. He tracks back. Cross doesn't come in. Getting a bit too predictable, those fake shots. Need to. Switch that around. Here is Piaka. Committed it. Shouldn't. Jesus. Stop this. Here is Piaka. Carito's there. Been the Carito show so far. Let's go. Bruno. Inside. Here is Rito. 
Vujovic again, now Gallo, he's the four man out wide, it's a good save by Perry. Why did Vujovic just stood there though? Could have easily scored that if he got to the ball. When they met before, nothing between these two sides. No, oh, that is a bit annoying. To the manager in the pre-match press talk. Here is Piaka. What a ball to David Alaba. Crosses in. Gavrich is gonna clear that away any day of the week, really. And we're off. Here is Vigarito. He steps past his man. Ball doesn't get to Rito though. Darara, oh what a ball! Jack is alone here. Can go in from here. Alaba. Alaba again, Piazza. back to Piaka. Cross is in, Carito's there again. And the ball knocked away long. It's been his night so far. There we go. Pull and over to Rito. Rito gives it over to Gallo. I'm going to try it from here. And uh, that is going to be it for the half. Good first half. I did not expect uh, Juventus to be that slow off the blocks. But it's got to be said, we did play better than the last game that we played against them. Probably because we're a better team. Hello, and parent, how are you doing? I know. I know it's a shock. We're winning Juventus. Who do I take off? Urubari deserves a game. And Carito's been solid. I'm not going to take him off after that first half. So, Williams, Marino and Urubari are on. We're already resting players for the final game of the season. Against Juventus of all sides. Ridiculous. How poor they have played so far. Rabari. What a ball again. I, I knew I had to pass it back. Already had the triangle button to go through, but I saw him covering. Header, yes. Ovinson just about gets it to Urubari. Ross is not going to come in. Gavrich. There is Vlasic. Verde. Williams. Get it through. There is Rito crossing in and Marino's there. It's 2 0. We're gonna beat Juventus. Who would have said? Who would have said that we were gonna beat Juventus? This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Juventus have not showed up whatsoever. First goal for Marino in the league. At this rate, I'm taking fourth place, really. Substitute getting ready for Juventus. And there's the interception. Urubari through. Rito. Great right ball. Here is Urubari again. Rito again. Through. Here is Ujevic on the turn. Just wide of the goal. Juventus haven't had a single shot. <laughs> I mean, it just says it all, doesn't it? They haven't had a shot. I think it's going to be pretty easy for them. Through. I mean, this is just spectacular. I meant to pass it to Colin Williams, but it doesn't. You know what? It's just ridiculous, this. Here is Ronaldo. He's dangerous at every single time. What a challenge that is. It's still not got the ball, though. Committed badly. Crosses in. Stororo doesn't get the header on target. Well, he certainly has. Two more and the prophecy comes through. Well, that's true, but I don't think the prophecy is going to go through because finally Juventus have made the subs. It really happens on when they make the subs. The AI seems to turn on when they are losing with the big club. They seem to switch on. And it really looks like that is happening. But we're not switched off yet. Here's Colin Williams. 
We have runners, Rito. Gives it out wide to Arvidsson. Great cross for Ujevic, is 3-0. Come on, boys. We've got a Ujevic goal. What did I say at the start? All I wanted this game was for Ujevic to get a goal. There we go, the big man up front, the big logs. There we go. Backwards header and everything. That is a goal and a half. Here we go. It could be 4-0 as well, which would be pretty, pretty hilarious. Alright. Okay, breathe. Oh, what a bad pass that is. Still got it though. I'm, re I'm really going for four now. This is ridiculous. How have Juventus turned this bad? Weevic. Oh, what a ball! What a ball to Urabari. Come on, mate. Take off. Inside. I even pass it with the X so it goes back. Nah. Goes forward, of course. I can sense this. I can sense that they're trying to ruin the prophecy. Orsolini's on the region as well. Interesting. I'm pretty sure it's the region. I'm assuming it is. What a ball back to Carrizo. He goes. Oh, that's a, such a bad pass. My bads. And that's an equally sharp pass from them. Alright, Heather, Urabori. Rita does well, well to collect possession, but not to recycle pass. it. Well, only two more minutes to be and added. now they're really just now. damage they limitation mode. Cross is in, it's not going to go in. in. Yeah, it's going to be 3 0. Sure. But, I mean, what a win. A from the bench for Never thought we'd win this, ever. Let alone with a clean sheet. Oh, and in the, in the in, especially in the manner that we did, basically joking throughout. The Juventus, did, this is not the Juventus that I played earlier in the season as well. They ended up having a few shots at the end when they finally showed up, but it's ridiculous. Rito, man of the match, 9.1 for him. 8.9 for Arvidsson and 8.2 for Carito. I think that's the other way around, really. But anyways, good performances by the wingbacks and the strike partnership. Then uh, Gallo and Bruno, fundamental in the first half. Gallo got an assist and Bruno got a goal. Esposito made three saves. Yeah. You're, oh, you're disappointed. I'm sorry, lad. Just, uh, you know... 3-0 is not a good result. It isn't. It is a fucking great result. Should have been 4. Yeah. Whatever. We've just shot up. That's good news, but... Also better news, Atalanta and Roma didn't play today. So we can make sure they both win. And it doesn't seem like they are going to do it without our help. All right. Atalanta's won. Roma hasn't. Great. And I completely forgot if they're playing each other, which is just silly. Come on. Please don't be playing each other. That would kill me. Inside, that would kill me. Please don't be playing each other. Okay, they are not playing each other. Good news. Ooh, Atalanta's playing against Fiorentina and Roma is playing Spal. Right. Interesting how Atalanta beat the tougher opposition whilst Roma just choked under the pressure. There we go. They've both won. We can save it up, trash this game against Torino and we're done with the season. And uh, for this small episode 
It really does look small with just two games that we've played. I know they were great games, but honestly, I don't really class it as an episode. To make, make sure that we lose today and we get fourth place. It's a good enough season for me. It was just been really interesting how I did not think that this team would be good enough to even be in this position. But they are. They are. And uh, Juventus became champions losing. Which is amazing. They're like... The first game as champions they just been absolutely smashed to pieces. Right, here we go. We're going to put the scrubs out. We're going to give a game to every single player that hasn't played this campaign a lot. Bring on Giordano. He can play there in the semen, really. Diaz is in. Good shout, that. Lopez in as well. Um... What about left backs? We can play Fister, that's a good choice. Then, um. Uh, wingers. Don't think we have that much choice. Do have a choice for Cam, though. That is going to Chang. Then, a uh, centre back, we're going for uh, Gavrich. Arvidsson can play again. Uh, Bruno as well. We'll take off Teki. Actually, no, he's still in the run. I mean, Simone Zaza's has really took off, hasn't he? So, it doesn't really make sense. We'll put the worst subs out as well. We'll put, we'll put him. There we go. Never thought we'd lose this. Ne never thought we'd be this high, rather. So I don't have to do that again. Just saving it. And uh, we should be good to go. Torino in the final game of the season. Please lose. There we go. 2-1 loss at home to end the season. I will take it. 40 million euros as a prize. And uh, oh, that has definitely sealed the objective. Good to see that the board is happy with me. Because they're going to need it for the youth development objectives. Congratulations on losing. <laughs> yeah, never thought I'd feel so happy after a loss. But I am. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna need the the manager rating is gonna need to be this high to deal with the uh the youth development objective. <laughs> Same, same here. It really is the same over here. Grabasic has gone up to a 75, that's good news. I just clicked on the catalogue for no reason. Let's carry on. Let's wait for the last players that want to get out of the Youth Academy to ask to be promoted. Normally it's in the 21st, there we go. Akin Aslan, the highest rated player, wants out. He's 18, every right. Makes sense, but you, we just know it's scripted for being in the 21st in the first place. And I've looked at his weak point skill moves. I know they are good enough, but they're not what Super Cool wants them to be. Akin Aslan, 3 star, 5, uh, 3 star, 4 star, rather. 5 foot 8. Really looks like a nice order to run in our side. And uh, this team could do with an order to run on the bench. 
It really looks like harder to wrap. 70 overall, good on the ball, quick. It, it really feels like a blueprint. Boo! Well, there you go. That's what we get. I won five star, five star. You've got Gallo, mate. Calm down. Youth player wants out. Now it's Marco Costa. And here is the tough cookie. Right. I'm going to release Russell Cooper because I've checked his weak foot and skill moves. And I am glad to announce we're going to avoid the bullet here. He's got one star weak foot. That is the reason. So he's gone. We can promote whoever we want. Now it's Marco Costa that wants out. And honestly, I really want to promote him. But I don't think if he... I don't know if he has a future at the club. From the get-go. Because he's just that low overall. But I'm going to promote him anyway. Because he wants out. I didn't save it for a reason. Because if anyone terminates their contract... For... For no reason, because it th this does happen some of the time. It, like, they don't give you a warning, or like, goes hidden in the other message. Like, for, exam for example, uh, it'll happen right here where it says Tyler Alexander wants out. And uh, what I'm going to do is going to promote Tyler Alexander out of the Youth Academy. And what will happen in a few days' time, without giving you a warning, the one of the other guys will go as well so we're going to protect who we really want here that's Hassan Abubakar and uh, Fabio Medeiros but we're not going to promote them and you'll know why shortly Hassan Abubakar wants out perfect we can promote him I know he's got decent weak foot and skill moves, but again, not what Supercool is looking for. So don't have an heart attack just yet. He's a decent player, has been in the Youth Academy for ages, makes perfect sense. Fabio Madeira's is quality. It is really the best product we have left in the Youth Academy that is available for promoting. I would argue, I would accept an argument with Al Sharani being in the equation, but he's still not eligible for promotion. So Abubakar is in, and uh, I need to check how many players we can promote. We can afford to just promote one more. Interesting. Oh, because Cerny didn't go. That's right, Cerny's on his way out. And I don't think he's going to go. Now, out of the lower knees, who do you think I would release? We've got still the two release spots. I think I would release Conti. And I'll also release Andrew Jackson. That is my opinion. Maybe Alpha Yumi. But personally, I think Jackson and Conti should go. I like Eggenberger, personally. I mean, I, I don't want to follow just that logic, really. But we can have a look at them, sure. Right. Almost all of them have good weak foot and skill moves. I like Marco Rita when I played with him. He can do as a striker. Conti, I think, is really the worst. And I think... Elmer Barak would be in the equation as well. 
Then a Corny is a centre back. For a centre back, he's got good weak foot and skill moves. And Alpha Yume as well. When you play with, who feels bad? That's exactly what Conti felt like. Even though it was a 54 overall player, didn't feel bothered at all to play. So we're going to be really careful before we release anyone. We're going to save the backup here. We can go back if we need to. Alright. This is what I wanted to do live so people don't get mad at me basically. And Wei can go. Honestly, like if he goes I won't be too mad at him for going. So we say that at this point what we're gonna do skip ahead a few days until the first oh we don't need to wait until the first. Let's just see who terminated his contract. This is exactly what I was talking about. And it was Fabio Medeiros. So we do need to release someone. So no matter what, that will happen. So what we're going to do is promote Fabio Medeiros because that is the one that we're trying to keep. I know Sharani and Wei are most likely to stay because they're 16 year olds but we're gonna save it and see just because we have only four players if they stay I don't think so but we can try then we'll move on to release players and I think we just got away with the bullet I think we just did No, we didn't. Okay. Who actually terminated his contract? It wasn't it was the other centre back or the defender? Can't remember his name. It was Teco Bonsu. And uh, Teco Bonsu is a solid player. I really don't want to miss. Alright, be right back. No problem. So someone's going to terminate their contract. It doesn't show their name. Which is ridiculous. And it's Teco Bonsu again, so we're gonna have to promote Teco Bonsu. And it's a perfect replacement for a Conte. Personal, personally, I think so. So we're gonna release Matteo Conte first. So Conte's a. Uh, 60 overall player. Oh, come on, why doesn't it tag the center defensive mids? It's just never really liked by you guys. I just wanted him to be promoted because he was homegrown talent, but he didn't turn out to be good. So we get him off the books. Now, what will we do? Go ahead to the Youth Academy and promote Teco Bonsu. So we're going to do it again. Save the backup.
place contracts expiring there we go it seems like whoever wants to get out has gone out which is amazing so we're gonna test this until the end of the season and see if they stay let's train the players and we'll go over the stats after that if everything goes right at the end of the season we'll go through the stats there's the player of the month shortlist have to get through a couple of training drills here and there as well no Palmer players which is a bit of a shade. That win against the Juventus was massive. But we did lose every other game, so that's interesting. That there's a Roma player. I think we're off the hook. Which I'm pleased to announce. Got some players going up for international duty. Marinovic seems close to going up to 72 overall, which is amazing. Got a few internationals here. Marinovic and Alexander are going to New Zealand. Esposito and Gruber to Italy and Austria. And Eldib is going to go to Egypt for the World Cup. Interesting that nobody else got called up. Especially Ismail for Saudi Arabia, but they probably didn't qualify. Or uh, Morales for Mexico, for example. That is a that is interesting to say the least. Or maybe even Bacini or a uh, uh, Verde for Italy, but they're good sides anyway. Or Kovacic for Croatia, who probably didn't qualify. Or uh, Lundgren for Sweden, even. Techy for Sweden, rather. Or uh, Colin Williams for the US. Back, Saudi Arabia will win the World Cup. I actually hope that happens. So they can see. So that. Uh, um, so that you get a bit happier. Jesus. FIFA World Cup, trashiest logo I've ever seen. So Paraguay's in there. Belgium, Portugal. Oh, that is such a big group. And then there's Hungary and Paraguay. Completely know who's going through. At least in FIFA terms, you know. Germany, Slovenia. United States didn't call up Colin Williams. Very interesting. Then uh, Uruguay, Slovenia didn't call up Cerny. And I don't think we have any German players. England, Greece, New Zealand and Colombia. Okay. Brazil, Netherlands, Austria and India. Then there's Spain, the Czech Republic, Poland and the Ivory Coast. Italy is there. Switzerland, Canada and Egypt. So LD is going to play uh, them. Then there's France, Australia, Bulgaria and Cameroon. And finally, Argentina, Denmark, Sweden and South Africa. So, Saudi Arabia are not in the World Cup. So, they can't even win the World Cup to begin with. That is a, a shock. Right, wow. So who are we gonna train? Now that Marinovic is going to the World Cup, I don't know. I really don't. I think Fister, maybe, train him up a little bit, make him a good player. Because Salone, I don't think he, he can hold 
his own. Still need to boost Davorovic in the summer. That's going to be a, a mouthful, basically. Or maybe we just uh, train him right now. Is that... Oh, oh, he's got the attack positioning to go up. That is a big one because it's so easy to get him up. It really is. So, what we're going to do, so we don't stunt him or anything, we're going to train his strength up. Somehow only at 58, but he feels strong. Thank... But India did, I know. I know. The curry munchers are in, but Saudi Arabia isn't. Nothing against India, I love India, but like, as a footballing nation, you know what I mean. Right, I think we're off the hook, which is fantastic. We got away with just releasing Conti. We're going to save it right here, have a look at the stats and wrap it up. So, um, great season. I mean, it went over my expectations, uh, you know that much. And uh, somehow we ended up in fourth place. I think we're going to go to the playoffs to see if we play in the Champions League. If we don't, I think we're just going to skip ahead that season because I don't think the team is ready to wrap it up yet. Let's have a look at the other competitions. Manchester City beat Everton in the UEFA Super Cup. That is a new one. Did not think Everton would make it there but fair play. Roma beat Milan in the Coppa Nazionale. I want to go for it next year in this competition. Champions League. Let's have a look. Who has won the Champions League? They don't increase naturally. Yes, that is true. Manchester City won the Champions League against Bayern Munich. Interesting. Alright, no surprises there. Uh, let's have a look at the Europa League. Don't think Everton w would win it again. Why do you say Liverpool? They, yeah, they they ain't they ain't. Just why? Just Lee Porter would be fun, yeah. Oh come on, this is taking ages to load. Come on. Finally, Juventus has won the Europa. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Top of Serie A, and they've just won the Europa League. If we beat Juventus 3 0, then what do you think we'll make of the Europa League? We'll make a, a rave meal of it. How? How is Juventus even down there? I mean, if anyone, Juventus is taking the crown. I mean, we know Spurs is decent, but they're no Ajax. Let's put it that way. And uh, Juventus are just too good for Spurs. And Chelsea and Benfica, like, they were always going to be Benfica, let's be honest. As much as I hate Benfica, they are a solid side, but they're not good enough to compete with them. Now... I think, let me just check, where did Porto finish, where did Liverpool get, because they're not even in the quarterfinals if I check that right, they didn't make the semis, didn't make the quarters, and what about here, they lost to Inter, you know what, fair play, Inter has a very good side in the save, one of the best. The, it's mid 80s average in the team so you know what they just got a tough draw and that is fair enough don't want to change the competition you mong bean game fair enough Liverpool lost to Inter 
That's not so shocking after all, knowing Inter's side. And where did Porto finish? Porto didn't even qualify. Wow, so they're down in the Europa League. That is a shock. Porto normally qualify for the Champions League. And by the way, this is off topic, but I've just seen the uh, top 10 UEFA rankings and I've, I've had a, a, a good laugh at it. Like, how has Arsenal and Porto in the top 10? I cannot believe it. I am a Porto fan. If you follow my Twitter, you should know that. You should be upset about it. I know. I'm just not one of them fans that go... Nah, I... I Analyze everything. I take everything in and it's a bloody football simulation fucked up game. Why would you even care about it? You just have a laugh at it. That's how it works and uh, Porto didn't even qualify for the Europa League. This is game serious. Are you shitting me? Right, okay. Okay, this is going out of I Know this game is bad, but it has never been this bad Okay Let's have a look at what happened. All right, Premier League, City won. United six points off. Liverpool finished fourth. Somehow they're down there, probably because of the Champions League campaign going on. But United went further. Actually, scratched that. Who went? Arsenal, Chelsea, and Everton. Yeah. Pretty realistic, in my opinion. The top six are there, and then there's Everton. If you ask me. Stoke are in the Premier League. Our biggest legend is... Yeah, it is. And it's Madger. With a D. There we go. It's pronounced like that. Nottingham Forest, Wolves and Cardiff are going down. Wolves must have got rid of Ruben Neves and Jota and all those great players. Bournemouth and Fulham are going up. Then in league, huh? Paris Saint-Germain won. No surprise there. Bundesliga, Bayern Munich won. No surprise again. Ingolstadt and Augsburg are going down. That is a bit of a shock. Stuttgart getting fifth. That is a bit of a shock as well. Same with Leverkusen in second. Let's have a look. Oh, what Serie B is going on? Benevento and Brescia are going up. Genoa, Hellas, Verona, Empoli, Perugia, Salerno and Spezia are fighting out to see who gets up with them. Edit the VZ. Ajax won. Two points off PSV in second. And there's a, just a massive gap to the rest of the pack. This is really what happens in a lower, like, out of the top five competition. At least Porto won the, the Liga Nos. All right. Fair play. Okay, this game is not, <coughs> not so bad after all. All right. And you can see the difference between Porto Benfica and Sporting to the rest of the pack. You, you just can't. There's almost a 15 point gap. Porto's a shit show on feet. I want to have a look at their team. Because how the fuck did they finish up outside the top three? That is ridiculous. I, actually, out of the top four, because I think fourth place here qualifies as well in this game. Gets the playoffs for the Europa League. Because there are some of the leagues are missing. And that's how they make it up. And this is what happens. Not here, you... Oh, my God. Right. Let's have a look at the Spanish League. Real Madrid won that. That is a bit of a shock, to be honest, with the team that they have compared to Barca and Atletico Madrid. Sevilla finishing second... They lost to a club from San Marino. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. But it, it's a game. Like, I don't take... 
the the simming of uh, games in here that seriously because I know how fucked up it is and how random it is. Like, you can have, you could almost do a YSL just simming. Like as quickly as playing it, almost as quick. Then uh, Alavis, Rayo Vallecano and Nemancia going down. Really surprising that Sevilla got second, but far off Real Madrid. And you can see the gap between the top, like the top teams. Especially from Real Madrid downward. This is, shows how random the Simon was. Real Madrid was an actual failure this season. They lost every single thing. That they had to fight for. And the, here they just smashed the, the Lee into next Tuesday. Deportivo and Malaga are going up. Same with uh, Las Palmas or Zaragoza. Zaragoza, rather. And Besiktas has won the Super League. And the Turkish League is an absolute mess. Because you know the top three will do it. And then there's a surprise. This case was a surprise fourth being so high. But everywhere else, you can tell the difference between the lower uh, table, there's mid table, and then there's the top four or five teams. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen, I, I remember you saying that. Oh, that's great. FC Dallas won ML uh, winning MLS. Good. I think Team Woods will definitely be happy about that. Alex Alexi do have two games in hand. But they're seven points. They're eight points off. So, uh... Really shows that they're having a good start of the season. I'm really happy for FC Dallas. Then, uh... What about the Chinese Super League? Shanghai SIPG are winning it. No surprise. And our Reds are winning the J1 League. Then, uh, Brazilian League. Fluminense are winning. Interesting. Still early days, though. Some of the leagues don't finish at the same time. Anyway, what a shock that was. It really is. Every single year I get surprised big time like that. This year was Porto being so shocking in the European competitions from last year and um, can I import a new team sheet that would be ideal import team sheet there we go so let's have a look at Porto because that is really interesting. Putter's got an alright sound now. The defense is really lacking. They've probably got a regen there. They've got some of the fringes playing. They've probably sold some of the best players. It really happens in real life. Don't blame them. Quintero's the captain though. That is that is just wrong. I'm gonna let it slide because he's a good player, but that's just wrong. He's never going to be the captain. Then uh, Braga has a solid side. Benfica as well. And Sporting as well. And then the rest of the teams, apart from Gimaraes and uh, Braga, are just like this. There's Santa Clara, there's Ave. Portimonense is a bit uh, overpowered because of Nakajima being so good. But he's going. He's going to one of the top five sides. After that, then there's just this. Look at that. Absolute trash. Boa Vista are a shadow of themselves. And they are mid-table. Because of this. Let's have a look at the Eredivisie. It really is the same thing. There's Ajax. AZ are alright. Same with um, Utrecht. Scranning and Feyenoord. Had a shocking season, by the way. Then there's PSV. Then the rest is just average. It really is.
Right, let's have a look at the squad hub. I think it's a good time for us to do that. So Esposito and Grover both got six clean sheets. Interesting. Really had the same amount of games. Grover had less games because of the simming. But he still managed to keep a few clean sheets when I was playing with him. Then the Lopez got three appearances and didn't keep one. That is a shame. I wanted him to have one. Then Alpha Yumi didn't was on loan and Abubakar just joined. He's five star two star, I didn't show him by the way. There it is. Six foot one tank. And uh, Morales was our first team right back. It was really uh in direct competition with Vlasic for that position, but sometimes Vlasic had to play inside. So I can't say he's a right back through and through. Got an assist. Three clean sheets only though. Hmm. Probably in that shaky start of the season though, that's probably why. And uh, even without keeping the clean sheets, he's been solid. And Fabian Madeiras didn't show him either. Three star, four star, six foot two. And uh, he's just a, a beast. He's a physical specimen. And he's potential to be special. What can you ask? What really can you ask from a player? Then uh, Gabrich is up next. Fantastic player. Seven clean sheets, only a yellow card at 7.1 average. Not the best, but I think he's been better than that, personally. Shame that he hasn't got any goals or assists, but it really doesn't go up that long. Just for corners. And he, he seems to win every header from a corner and never score. Which is intriguing. On the other side of the coin, though, Pacini came in in uh, uh, the start of the season and was an instant hit as well. And he scored a goal, had 10 clean sheets in... Uh, 13 more games than Gabbridge. Not all in the Serie A, so uh, fair play. But overall, two solid defenders. There's our centre back partnership for the future. Another solid season for Bacini, I'd say. Again, I think he's better than what the rate, uh, average rating says. Same with Marinovic, he's been a quality substitute. Only kept a clean sheet though, out of the eight games that he had in Serie A. That is interesting. Vlasic uh, had, all right, had an alright season, I'd say it's accurate this time. Two assists, five clean sheets in 25 games. That's a clean sheet every five. I'd say it felt like he did better than that, but at the same time he only got that, so... He did make some mistakes at the start of the season, but I think he's past that. I think this team just got off on the wrong foot and then just turned it around during the season. Then Marco Costa just promoted him, haven't shown him yet. Six foot five, three star, two star. I think he's a great player, but he might just come a bit a bit too late. Sell the whole club. There we go. That's super cool's idea. That's that's how it's gonna. That's how we're gonna win the champion. Yeah, just sell the whole club and go to Porto. <laughs> nah, I, I don't like. I committed myself to this. But I've got an idea to do a a Portuguese league. Um series later on this year just to challenge myself then uh Arvidsson and uh Carrizo with the left backs and Kovac of course Kovac was the main man he's been the captain since day one he's had the the armband on and a chip on his shoulder got an assist unfortunately didn't score but he is a very good defender a clean sheet just below every, just over every three games. Three yellow cards, 
think he's better than that. I think he did better than that this campaign. Just because we got off on the wrong foot. And some bad performances at the start. By everyone, like really everyone. They were just not good enough at the start. But they've turned it around. They've grown a lot this season. From League 2 to Premier League. I mean, I do that. Super cool. Do you watch Morricamp? If you don't, you should, because it's exactly what I'm doing. Arvidsson and Carito, two solid backups to have. Arvidsson had to play at right back some of the time. Then, 7.3 average for Arvidsson. I don't think... I mean, he was around that good, but I think Kovac was better, and he had worse. Same with Carito. Thought he had a good season, about that, but I thought Kovac had, like, 8 average rating. Maybe not that much, but, like, 7.7, 7.8, something around that. It's crazy how undervalued defenders are. Then Diaz and Dysenberger didn't really play. Dysenberger got an assist, probably what will keep him around for the pre-season. Same with Diaz, even though he didn't really had a good season, he's got the potential. And uh, do the same with Porto, I don't think so, I don't like it. I don't like to take Porto to, to League 2 and do it. I like to keep the integrity of the leagues. I might do a one-off, but like, I don't think so, that's not what I had in mind. Then uh, Murad El Mubarak was on loan. Ismail didn't play much and he had an alright season despite not having any goals, assists, or clean sheets for that matter. Just don't think he did bad for the few chances that he had. Do I run out Diaz's contract though? Because he didn't do much this season. Huh, that is interesting. Now, I'll think about that one. That is tough. Ismail has potential to be special. Hasn't lived up to it though. It, it really shouldn't be has potential to be special. Then uh, to beat El Deeb, a goal and an assist. This guy can't shoot to save his life. He's a brilliant CDM, but when we need him to take the long shots, he's just not good enough. That is why uh, Jacobs and Verdi are playing ahead of him. Jacobs was playing ahead of him anyway, but Verdius took his spot in the starting lineup because of that. He's an equally good defender, but he has the technical ability to play there as well. And LD just doesn't. He, he just doesn't. So he's relegated to the bench. But he still had a good campaign, I'd say. Seven clean sheets feels at like feels really low. Renew his contract, sell him in the summer. You know what, that's probably a good call. Because it didn't do much, I mean just look at it. Didn't do anything. And he played centre back some of the time. Then at Boschko, uh, some of the appearances on him were off the bench and really from the start of the season. But since he came along into the starting lineup and got his place, he's been an unstoppable force, really. Four goals, nine assists, seven clean sheets in 36 games. The 33 in the league is the ones that I'm really counting. Who gives a crap about two games in the cup and the preseason? 7.1 average. Felny had better than that, but I'll take it. Very good right winger. Then we'll move on to the centre mids. Eggenberger was loaned out. And I'll show Bo uh, Bonsu really quickly. Two star, three star. But he feels like... He feels like Yaya Torre basically. He, actually no, I'll, I'll scratch that. He, feel, he feels really good. He feels like a really good uh, technically gifted player. 
it is technical stats are off the charts. I know his weak foot and skill moves are not great, but who cares? He's an exciting prospect. There we go. Then uh, we signed Daniele Vigarito. Six foot, solid centre mid, competent in every single area of the attacking department and the physical department, but defensively, he just can't do it, so he can't play right back like it says there. We tried him there once and it was catastrophic. Got a goal and an assist, impressive games that he had at the end of the season. 6.7 is a bit too harsh on him, to be honest. Some of the appearances were off the bench that he didn't have much time to do. Anything. Like, it's just as simple as that. Overall, really like this signing. Then uh, the scout feature star, Daniel Jacobs, has been fantastic for us. Five goals, three assists, four goals and two assists in the league. Overall, felt like he had a better campaign than what it says in the Serie A. I think he should have about 7.5 in the average rating. Anyway, great player, Dan Hendricks 2.0. He is a blueprint of the scout future star that we had in the first relegation regen rebuild series, which is actually pretty funny. Dutch centre mid. He's 5'8", 4 star, 3 star, high low work rate, he's left footed, the similarities are there. He's technically gifted as well, like Dan Hendricks had these disgusting uh, stats. And he wasn't great physically, but he was competent enough to do it. The technical stats were like dark green after dark green, in, like in here. It, ridiculous the similarity, it, it really feels like the same player. Then a Jacopo Verdi, really interesting story. Bought him at the uh, start of this season, maybe during the other season. I, actually, no, it was at the start of the season. What am I talking about? Anyway, great player to buy. He was out for those two months during the season. That's why he doesn't have as many appearances as you'd think. And he didn't. He wasn't here from the get-go of the season as well. We did play against him before we bought him. A goal and an assist in the league, he got two overall. He was a lot better than what the stats say there. He did play as a CDM and he did come off the bench some of the time. 7.0, don't think that's a good reflection on this season. On this guy, yes, on Mauro Sant Guilherme Santoso Jasper, he had about that season. Only played six times, but he got a goal and an assist. Some important some important stats there in some of the important games of the season. Just like Jacobs and Verde did. Then Marino, same outcome as uh, Santoso Jasper. The two leadership traits that we have have done equally well this season. But somehow Marino has a lower. I mean, no, we're, like, we've had enough of that, please. Just, just, no. We're not having that. Just, just no. Jesus Christ. Right. Not having that. It is classy over here, pal. Not even that type of comments. Grabasic again. Another quality winger I thought is way out of the club with that one star weak foot. Thought he had the foot out of the door, but he, he really hasn't. Six goals, three assists. 6.8 average rating though. And this is where I agree that Grabasic goes missing sometimes in the game. But I do think it was better than 6.8. Then Andrew Jackson was out on loan. Sergio Mendes. Same with Gabriel Sikora and Ben Hammer. They're all gone. Just to cam here. Jung Su Chan got a few chances. He's an alright player. He really is. But I don't think he's just about good enough. 
I think he's getting to good enough for the next campaign. I don't think he was good enough during this one, which is a shame that we couldn't loan him out. But I think he's ready for the next campaign. He's getting there. <clears throat> and he might take the spots of these fellow guys over here. He's definitely taken Jackson's spot. Binhammer, I'm not too sure because of the 5 star skills that I love and so the super cult. Even though he has the best weak foot and skill moves, that really hasn't shown. It really hasn't in the few games that I've had with him. Then uh, moving on to the centre forwards. Rito had 7 goals and an assist. think he was good this season. Not as good as last season. But he also did the job. And... Uh, I think 7.5 is a good average rating to have. Only 17 goal, uh, only 17 appearances in the league. That is a bit um, shocking. But then again, we've got plenty of strikers. We've got Ujevic. Only had three games. He only had three games and he had two goals. It really shows how good Ujevic is. Then Lundgren had three goals in 13 games. But he does go missing sometimes. And uh, Giordano had a goal in two games. Then Shen and Campbell were out. Uh, Sol Ortiz and Teki, the two main strikers, got 24 goals in between themselves. And Rito got another seven. It was really th these three. And Ujevic pushing the tempo. Not Lundgren. And Giordano came way too late. But he still got a goal. So fair enough. He was, he did his job. Solar Tees, 10 goals but more assists than Teki, 5 assists to 1. Teki has 14 goals, pretty much the same output as far as goals plus assists is concerned. But I do think Teki had a better season than Solar Tees because Solar Tees had his ups and downs and Teki was just consistent. He was consistent throughout the whole get uh, throughout the whole campaign. He had one bad game in the Coppa Nazionale and a good game in the preseason as well. Fair play. But overall, I think his average rating is about the same. Solar Teases one has really helped by the preseason and the cup competitions. It is really carried because I don't think it was that good in the league. Teki was solid all the way around the season. Then moving on to the wingers. Bruno, man uh, that was coming off the bench, had two goals, two assists, had an alright campaign, 7.0 probably describes it. Came off the bench most of the time. If he started was like once or twice. But when he comes on, he, he brings a burst of pace that is really helpful to put off position defences off. He is really helpful in that sense. More than the goals or the assists, he is really helpful to breaking down a side. Then uh, Tyler Alexander and Akin Aslan just joined. Tyler Alexander is 5 star, 4 star, that's why I kept him around. 5'9 can play on either side of the wings and he is quick as hell. Then uh, Colin Williams, 73 overall, gone up by 6. Another classy winger. Had some important moments in the season like that assist. He had two assists really. The second assist in the same game. Shame he didn't have a goal because he deserved that goal. 7.3 average, can't really say much more, he turned up in the last end of the season. Cerny, is, this really shows why we sold him. He just didn't turn up, either in the pre-season, or in the cup, or in the, C in the Serie A. Just didn't do anything, got a, didn't even got a clean sheet. That's exactly why we sold him. Because the team has moved on. 
Gallo had 22 appearances, some of them off the bench, some of them with starts. It was in between. He started off as a starter, but then he got dropped to the bench and mostly came off the bench in the second half of the season. Even during November and December, he was already on the bench. So his average rating takes a knock because he doesn't really get to do much. But when he does, he is brilliant. Four assists really shows it. Off the bench, four assists in 20 games is decent. And a goal as well, that's a goal or an assist every four games. Coming off the bench, that's not so bad, especially. And uh, at the start of the season, he played all of the games where he had dry spells. So it wasn't just his fault. Got to take that in consideration as well. Michel Gallo again. He's not exactly the goal scorer. He can be, but he's just not all the time. He's more of that classic winger that just runs like Bruno. It just runs and delivers balls into the box, but they just don't work in this game because he can't win headers. Then Arita was out on loan, can't wait to see him back. We'll definitely play him in the preseason. Just loaned him out because he didn't really have the space in the squad. But now with Cerny going, and uh, we're probably going to loan Alexander. We're not gonna. We're not too sure what we're going to do with these players. That have just came out and the players that we had from the past, like Orobori, for example. Had a good time, fair enough. Two goals and three assists in 13 games in the league. That is solid. 7.0, probably where I'd put him. Average wise, had two bad games in the preseason. Who cares? Pardon me, who cares? Honestly, I think he's decent enough to stay. But I think potential-wise, that is really letting down. It's really letting him down. Because stats-wise, he's there. Skill-wise, on the pitch, feels nice. Had a, has a few goals, a few assists. Has a clean sheet as well in the few games that he had. Some of them off the bench as well. Big chunk of those. And he still did the job. And that is it. That is it for the season review and for this massive stream. We're what? Three hours in? We're two and a half hours in, I think. No, we're just two hours because we started at one, one and a half. 1.30 p.m. There we go. All right. That is it for this episode. Mammoth one. But really just because of the season finale. Uh, see, really just because of the season review, rather. Season finale was quite quick. And uh, just for you guys to have a, a little glimpse of what we can sign in the summer. It's nothing short of spectacular. Got some really good players in here. Not that we need to sign them, again. Some of them are probably too good, even despite the transfer budget increase that we're going to get for going into Europe. Don't think we're going to sign many players, because the core of the, the spine of the team is there. It really is. We can sign a few players from uh, the other clubs. We're probably going to keep. Uh, these players in the Italian clubs, so we so we have some competition. But like, we might sign someone that isn't from our league. We'll have to wait and see. We sold Silver Angel. He was trash for a 77 overall player. And yeah, up to Kayad. You know the rest. Then I need to have a look at the regions. And um, we'll see you back in the pre-season live stream as usual. Now what I'm thinking is that we just play the Europa League and we play the cup competitions. Because I don't think this team is ready to win Serie A. 
but I do think it's ready for Europe and it's ready to get going in the cup it's really a competition where we haven't gone further than like the third round and that is a bit disappointing let me know what you guys think anyway and I uh, hope you have enjoyed this episode great to finish fourth and uh, I'm see you in the preseason live stream and until then have a good one bye bye